what's up guys, we have you to be here back with another video. So today is the first episode of a series I'm going to be doing talking about the top 5 decks of the format in my opinion. And the first deck I'm going to be talking about is the deck arguably that everyone is worrying about the most, which is Dragon Rulers. It is a deck that of course has just been released and we are all very very scared about based on what it has been doing in the OCG. But I'm going to go over some of the ways that you can actually cope with the deck in the TCG. And why I think it isn't actually much of a worry at all, obviously the deck is amazing, but there are certainly ways to combat it. So first of all, what do all of these cards do? Why are people so concerned about them? Well, basically, they're all level 7, which means they have great synergy with Sacred Sword of 7 stars. They all can search another copy of themselves or another dragon of the same element when they are banished. Um, they can all be special summoned from the hand or graveyard by banishing two dragon type and or monsters of that element from your hand and or graveyard. So they have a lot of synergy. They have a lot of consistency. Um, the hand and the grave are constantly live. Uh, the other thing is that a lot of them have a decent amount of attack points, or in the case of Redox, a decent amount of defense points if you simply need a defensive wall. And they all have individual effects. In the case of Blaster, he can discard himself and another fire monster to pop a card. In the case of Tidal, himself and another water to send a monster from your deck to the grave. In the case of Redox, himself and another earth to special summon a monster from the graveyard. And in the case of Tempest, himself and another wind monster to add a dragon type monster from your deck to your hand. But what you have to remember about this deck is the inherent limitations that are actually built into it. And I'm going to be going over some of those right now. So first of all is the fact that they can only use one of their effects per turn and only once that turn. So if you happen to discard Blaster and a Fire Monster to destroy a card, that effect is now used. You won't be able to special summon your Blaster from the hand or the graveyard. And you won't be able to plus if you banish him with Sacred Sword of Seven Stars, for instance. The same thing goes for Tempest, Redox and Tidal. If you use any one of their effects, you can use any of their other effects. We were a little unsure at first when these dragons first came out whether or not the effect of special summon from the hand of the graveyard was an effect or a summoning condition. I've actually just gone over the difference between those two things in a previous video. And if you examine the text on these cards, you will see that in fact they do all contain semicolons, as I pointed out in that video, which is the telltale sign that these cards are in fact ignition effects. Nevertheless, they do have this limitation built into them. The second limitation that they have is that during the end phase of the turn that they're special summoned in the opponent's turn, they will actually return to your hand. So if you special summon a dragon and you didn't XYZ summon with it, and then you somehow manage to keep the dragon on the field until your opponent's next end phase, that dragon will then return to your hand. So what is the actual play style of this deck? Well, at the outset, I'm just going to say it's not so much what the deck does in any individual turn that is a problem, apart from a first turn line darkness dragon. What's a problem is the fact that it can set itself up for the next turn and the next turn and the turn after that so easily and so consistently that eventually your resources are going to be gone and they're going to have a hand of six or seven cards and they're probably only going to have about 12 cards left in their deck but at that point they're going to have such an immense amount of control over both the hand and the graveyard in terms of presence as well as field presence uh, to boot that you're probably not going to be do able to do a lot about it. The other fact is that they can go into rank seven XYZs so easily in fact, their typical first turn is probably just pitching any small dragon and any level 7 dragon to special summon one from the deck, and then banishing those two to special summon another one from their hand, at which point they will search with the one that they banished, presumably of a different element, in order to, you know, you know, for synergy purposes. And then they will be able to search up another dragon. They will have four cards in their hand, they will have two level 7 beaters on the field, and then they will overlay for Dragosac, special two tokens, and then tribute the two tokens for a Lion Darkness Dragon. In fact, the standard turn one play in this deck that typically runs two Eclipse Wyverns is first turn line Darkness Dragon. If you have any of the baby dragons, an Eclipse Wyvern, and any of the level seven dragons, you can do it. It's a three card combo, and assuming the opponent doesn't have effect failure, you're going to be you know staring down in the face of a line Darkness Dragon first turn. And not a lot of decks can deal with that. The other thing that not a lot of decks can deal with is the guy that you see right here, number 11, Big Eye. When people are finally proud of getting their big monster on the field that nobody can get over, when hero players use Miracle Fusion and they go into their giant monsters, fair enough, they have a lot of back row. Uh, and that is definitely something which can stand in the way of an Elemental Dragon player. The strengths of the Elemental Dragon deck are the fact that it can overcome pretty much any obstacle, and it can be stopped by pretty much any obstacle, with almost no consequences whatsoever to the kind of long-term efficiency of the deck. Okay, so hopefully I put the fear of God into you at this point, but there are obviously ways to beat the deck. One, try and beat it at its own game. Let it discard all of its cards. Let it use its three super rejuvenations, its three gold sarcophagus, and its set sacred sword of seven stars. All of that stuff. Let it banish all of its stuff from the graveyard. And what do you do to solve that? Well, you run stall cards. 
you run cards like Swift Scarecrows, Battle Faders, uh, Tragoedias. Uh, don't run anything that you, that would actually net them an advantage because if you special something something like a Gores, they're just going to take it with Big Eye, and since it's level seven, they'll be able to overlay it for you know another Big Eye or whatever. So don't give them the advantage. Don't fall into their trap of just constantly responding to their attacks with your deep prisons and your mirror forces and stuff like that because if you use mirror force it's going to feed their graveyard unless they happen to have a drago sack in which case you won't be destroyed if you use bottomless trapital it's probably going to net them a plus because they're going to be able to search off it same thing goes for dimensional prison compulsory evacuation device is the way to go because they have they've had to banish or discard monsters in order to special summon two dragons then they've had to overlay it and try to detach for tokens or attach for big eye or whatever and as soon as they summon that monster if they've summoned a big eye, they are likely doing it for a reason. They have to take one of your bigger monsters. And compulsory evacuation device is a much simpler, better solution than actually letting them use up all three of their big eyes. Because the likelihood is they're not going to go into all three Drago sacks or all three big eyes during the game. So it doesn't actually matter that you're recycling them to the extra deck once again. All that matters is you're getting them off the field for that one turn and you're delaying that one turn longer. Because if you're going at 10 miles an hour with your deck, that deck is going at 100 miles an hour and it's probably going to want to do everything in the space of about 4 turns. And if it can't do that, it's going to get extremely frustrating for that player. Okay, so there's not really much need to worry because there are a hell of a lot of side deck options for this deck right now. First of all, you have these general removal cards. Anything that's sent to the graveyard is removed from play. You have the likes of Banisher of the Radiance, not particularly reliable since Reactant can just attack over him. Uh, you also have the likes, of course, of Macrocosmos and Dimensional Fissure, which also work against Mermails, so there is some synergy there with regard to your side deck uh, coping against various decks. So next of all, we have the general lockdown cards. These are the ones that I ultimately prefer, since they pretty much stop a Dragon Ruler player from doing just about anything. The same thing goes for Prophecy players, Mermail players to an extent. It basically prevents your opponent or you from adding any cards from your deck to your hand, or special summoning any monsters from your deck until second standby phase after activation. Really, really useful. Then you also have cards that prevent your opponent from actually removing cards from play, such as Necro Valley and Imperial Iron Wall. A first turn Imperial Iron Wall against a Dragon Ruler player can actually stop them dead in their tracks, and they probably won't be able to do much of anything, because if they summon any of their dragons from the deck, they're going to return to the hand during the next end phase, and they can't banish to summon a second dragon to XYZ summon. So honestly, they're very often left at a loss. And finally, we have cards that prevent the opponent from special summoning monsters altogether. Uh, provided it doesn't lock down your own deck, Vandy's Emptiness and Vandy's Fiend are actually particularly useful. You also have Jaugen the Spiritualist in the case of Prophecy players who can very easily main deck this card, but that isn't to say that you can't slide it in yourself against decks, provided it doesn't lock down your own strategy in the process. Uh, thirdly, we have Barrier Statues, and courtesy of Stephen Byrne who actually gave me the idea for these. Basically, it says no monsters can be special summoned except for the element of the statue. Really, really useful. They only have a thousand attack and defense, so they could be attacked over rather easily. But at the same time, your opponent is going to have to waste their normal summon and waste their battle phase, indeed, to actually get over these cards. So, not too shabby at all. So, Evil Swarm Ovion is the last card I'm going to be talking about. Obviously, you can't slide this in against stuff, but I would def definitely recommend trying out the Evil Swarm deck if you are worried about coping with the dragons. But as I've shown you uh, in the previous cards, there's plenty more ways to deal with it. But Evil Swarms are by far the best option, so I would definitely recommend trying out Evil Swarms if you want to actually beat this deck consistently. But anyway guys, that's it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And let me know what you think of the dragons. Do you think they are being overhyped? Or do you think they can be very easily sided against? Do you think they are a bit of a one-trick pony and can actually be shut down extremely easily? Um, some days I feel that's the case, but some days I feel that certain decks just cannot cope with the amount of dirt that this deck can go through. The amount of cards you can go through in one turn, the amount of special summons, the amount of big eyes, the amount of Draco sacks, etc. But uh, I'll leave it to you guys to post in the comments what you actually think about this. And I will talk to you guys later.